Hollywood pushes a liberal agenda to the rest of the country. And whether we like it or not, Hollywood dictates the culture of the country. You also call out Caitlyn Jenner. Yeah. But she she's a conservative. Yeah. Yeah. But I think I think that, you know, she's saying she wants to go into the woman's bathroom. She's a woman now. Go into the woman's bathroom. But why it's a tyranny by the minority. Why do I have to suffer? Because you can't decide what you want to be that day. All right, ladies and gentlemen, brave and beautiful and talented, uh, Stacey Dash, who joins us, I'm happy to say, right here in studio, actress, political commentator, author of a great new book, There Goes My Social Life. And uh, she's also a Fox News commentator, contributor. You see her on all the shows. Hello, great Hello. to see you. Nice Thanks to for see coming you. up. Thank uh, you for we'll get to the, the book, but all this stuff is in the book. Um, yeah. So, so based on your your view on um, on the bathroom issue and yeah. in general, I think uh, let's see, Huffington Post called you an unapologetic transphobe. <laughs> I never even heard of a transphobe before. I've I've, I've introduced a new word I to the guess, vocabulary. I guess. Uh, wh wh why are you so unafraid to speak out about what you believe in? Because why should I be afraid? Well, a lot, right. a lot of people don't. Right. A lot of people don't, though. A lot of people are and don't. Yeah, I know, and that's unfortunate. I feel sorry for them. They should get a backbone. Yeah, well, uh, it hasn't hurt your career. Uh, I've had a lot of people tell me that, you know, they're afraid to speak out because I've had people say, don't, don't say I'm a conservative because they're afraid it will hurt their no, career. People have told me, Stacy, shut your mouth or you're not going to work again. And I'm like, well, guess what? I'm not going to be scared into submission. Why is Hollywood the way it is? I have no idea. Meanwhile, they say they're liberals and they're open-minded, yet they're the most hypocritical. I mean, if you don't agree with them, then you're blackballed. Yeah, well, and, and the liberals today, I mean, the Democrats today, they're not JFK's party. I mean, no. strong defense, no. this, the low taxes. I mean, yeah. JFK wouldn't know what this party is. No. They're, they're, and you see, the, you see the violence outside of the Trump, uh, the last yeah. one in San Jose where the police chief there did nothing, the mayor blamed Trump, and the media said, well, Trump eggs them on. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, they're advocating anarchy. Yeah. Meanwhile, same thing happened at Kanye West's concert. They didn't blame Kanye. Why not? That's a good point. That's a good point. So, so let, me, let me talk uh, uh, about uh, the, um, the, the election. Um, get away from. Oh, I do want to show the bathroom there. You like? I, I think you might like this. Let's yes. put up this. Uh, someone sent me this picture. <laughs> Problem solved. Men on the right there, on the left, all the way on the right. Women, and in the middle, it says Democrats. Um, I, you know, I have a story in front of me that a uh, a transgender, a kid, a boy in Alaska high school takes home all state honors in girls track and field. He says he's a yeah. woman. He says he's a girl. Mm. So the girls are ticked off. Mm -hmm. He won everything. Well, because where are we headed? I don't know. He's a boy. His, he's got different muscles. He's got diff different DNA. He's got better muscles than we do. It's not fair. He's not really a girl. So. You mean there's differences between men and women? Oh, my goodness. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yesterday, we had an event. Uh, Hillary took to the stage in Brooklyn, and it was all about her being a woman. Let's watch some of what she had to say. But we are all standing under a glass ceiling right now. But don't worry, we're not smashing this one. Thanks to you, we've reached a milestone. The first time, the first time in our nation's history that a woman will be a major party's nominee for president. How do you feel about that whole running as a woman, we need a woman president, no matter who the woman is, apparently? I think it's ridiculous. I think she's a criminal. I think she has blood on her hands, and I think she should be in prison, not running for president. I mean, this is not about gender, race. It's about a person's character. It's about a person's ability to get a job done. We're talking about the United States of America, the best country in the world. We deserve a great leader, not someone who's going to sell our secrets to God knows who or keep our secrets in a barn. Yeah. Well, what, 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 what is the appeal? And it's not younger women. It's Bernie has the younger women, apparently, and, and Trump has some. But what is the appeal to, at all costs, get a woman, even though it's Hillary, 
under FBI investigation. An expert told the AP today that probably she compromised CIA agents' names by hacking and yes. by exposing her emails. The list goes on and on and on and on. And this is the woman, no matter what she, baggage she has, that women say she must be the president. How do you explain that? I, don't, I can't. I can't explain it. It's as if they've been put into a trance or something. It doesn't matter about her lawlessness. They, yet they want her to run the country. Yet if Donald Trump, you know, he, he filed for bankruptcy, oh my God, it's the biggest travesty in the world. Right. Why? Well, that's absolutely right. The double standard is incredible. I, I was shushed on CNN because I brought up the fact that Hillary in the 70s represented a child rapist, which is fine, uh -huh. but then she laughed about on a phone call, which is out there. Oh it's out God. there getting this guy off on a technicality. The woman now says she was 12. The woman says she ruined my life, and the media shushes you. They won't let you talk about it. What about the fact that at the trial for Benghazi, she says, what difference does it make? Yeah, the hearings, yeah. Yep, what difference does it make? Yeah. The difference is, uh, Secretary, you didn't pick up the phone. That's what difference it makes. Absolutely. You say this is going to get very ugly. Very uh, ugly. And that uh, Obama, who tied up traffic right outside here yeah. for you and me because he, he had to do Jimmy, Jimmy Kimmel. Or, which I really wanted. <laughs> you needed Uggs. You yeah. have beautiful shoes. Thank I you. I wish we could show the whole thing. <laughs> but all right, so, so uh, more ugly than you've ever seen it. How ugly could this get with the violence that we've seen against Trump? Well, if he doesn't win, if something happens and she wins, I mean, I wish I really doubt. She's not going to win. He's going to win. But if he doesn't win, I think this country is going to go through a revolution. I really do. How I, so? You mean she'll try to do things that... I think uh, that, no. I just think that his, his supporters are not going to take it lying down. How about Bernie's supporters? Um, will, they vote, will they vote for they'll, Hillary? They'll go smoke some pot or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> will, will they vote for or Hillary? Or they'll go to Venezuela. Who yeah. knows? <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, Hugo Chavez is gone. But you know, and you know what's going on in Venezuela. People waiting in lines like it's the old funny. Soviet Union no, to buy really, toilet paper really and food. Funny. I yeah. really don't mean to laugh at no, that. No, but hey, you know, sad. but Bernie, uh, how do you explain the Bernie phenomenon among, amongst young people? Don't they, they get sorry it? sorry for him. They think of him as a little old grandpa. I know whenever he speaks, I God help, I, God forgive me. Every time he speaks, I think he's gonna just keel over. I'm afraid, I'm scared. Every time he talks, I'm like <gasps> trying to breathe for him, you know, because he's just, I mean, he won't last very long, I don't think. What about, um, uh, so you think Donald Trump could win this? Yes. Okay, you're, are, you, are you concerned by the recent, uh, I mean, by the, he's going to have to fight the media and everybody else. He's going to have to fight the media. What else is new? Yeah, but you think he could do it, like with Absolutely. the judge thing? I mean, he didn't express himself too well. He, he should have yeah. talked about La Raza. He should have talked about the, the law firm that was granted the case yeah. to the plaintiffs that paid Hillary money. Yes. Instead, he kept saying he's Mexican, he's Mexican, he's Mexican. He's got to express himself right. better. Right, he has to express himself better, but... To be fair, lawyers do this all the time. You know, they pick judges according to the case because right. certain judges are harder on certain issues, right. right? So that's just what he's doing. I'm not going to speak to what's going on with that because he's a better businessman than I am and he knows what's best. But yeah, maybe he shouldn't have gone around saying he's a Mexican, he's a Mexican, he's a Mexican. But I don't think he hates Mexicans. No, and he's not a racist. It just happens to be the man's a Mexican. Yeah, well, my, the funniest <laughs> thing I saw was when you, uh, MSNBC had Al Sharpton in studio and they played Trump talking about the judge said, that's racist, right, Al? Yes, yes. Here's the definition, in my opinion, of a racist. Of a racist. And they're right, Al, isn't it racist? Yeah. Well, yes. <laughs> he's the biggest racist. Oh, my, my goodness. The book, There Goes My Social Life. From clueless to conservative. Yeah. How did you become a conservative? I was always a conservative. I just didn't know it. You know, I, I, the ethics of the streets, the code of the streets is inherently conservative. They are inherently conservative. You know, if you are a hustler and you're making $30,000 a day, you better believe you're bringing home $30,000 $30, a day right, and nobody's, ta yeah, you're not, nobody's <laughs> taking a dime. Right. And God help them if they try. Right. And you're also carrying a gun. And God help anybody who's going to try and take away that gun. So, hmm. Interesting. Those are very conservative principles, aren't they? How come the people in the inner cities who have been under democratic rule for decades at, with all the crime and all the shootings and all the unemployment, why don't they see that they need a change? Because they, 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 they've been so bamboozled and... And, and okey-doped. Okey-doped, you know, <laughs> with this, this, this narrative that conservatives are racist, homophobic, they don't care about them, they're all rich, you know, that's all they care about, which is not true. 
It's the Democrats that are the racists who are the rich ones. You know, the rich Beverly Hills, I call them the, the limousine liberals, yeah. you know, yeah. who are not diverse in any way. You know, who do not give, a, do, do not care about the people in the ghetto at all, yeah. trust me. You also talk about in the book uh, about uh, not uh, premarital sex. Yes. You, know, you sworn off that, and what yes. what made you t talk about your faith and and why you, you know you you how that has influenced you. Well, I'm Catholic, and I have a 12 year old little girl, and you know I I don't want her to have sex before marriage, and I thought, well, Stacy, if you're trying to teach this to your daughter, the best way is by example. Yeah. So I have to do it myself. I, I, could, I, could, I could talk to you forever, and uh, I hope one day you'll come back. The book, folks, There Goes My Social Life, by, and I mean it, uh, beautiful, and, and I do mean brave for a lot of reasons. Stacy Dash, uh, thank you so much. It's thank great you. to see you. Thank you for having me. All right, folks, we're coming back with Kristen Tate. Your calls, and give me five. Don't go away.